Oman Beye Year if we henara a GBC our tag is Ghana wins for election 2024. The goal is for the country to remain one United State beyond December 7. We're doing some politics and here is an independent candidate with a full intent of breaking the duopoly between the NDC and the NPP in the December poll. He leads the Alternative Force for Action, AFA. But with the current political climate and the cost of living crisis and everything that's happened, will he get what he desires? We are sitting down with independent presidential candidate, Dr. Sam Ankara. Doc, welcome back to GTV Breakfast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We sat um, about a year ago. When wow. You started nursing the ambition to put, you know, throw your hat in the race to the Jubilee House. Since we had that conversation, I'm sure that you've had the opportunity to go around the country. Have you? I have. And um, I'm surprised the time has gone that quickly. Yeah. I thought I was here a few months ago. It was actually wow. maybe sometime in 2023 yeah, when we had our yeah, last chat. Yeah. Um, what have you found? Well, I seen some of the most horrible situations going around the country. I realize our country is not, our cities and towns are not planned. Our people are suffering because of bad leadership. Our country is engulfed with debt everywhere. I mean, the challenges are many. The myriads of issues that we need to address as a nation are many. And as I've been saying, politics has to be what a vehicle or a tool that we use to uplift our people who are in deprived situation, social upliftment and change their standard of living. If politics is not doing that, what else will? Why are we not addressing these issues? Why are certain portion or part or population of the people left behind? We have some very terrible situations across the country. And I believe that as we go on, we would go into detail on exactly how we can address these issues and also make sure that our people are voting and choosing the right people. For instance, I was in a place in Damango area. And after I spoke to a team of people, an old lady just said, young man, I've heard many people speak, but listening to you you can see goosebump on my body you sound different it seems there's something that you are saying that is real what's the message however what do you tell them yeah, on the campaign trail yeah they, i mean i'll come to that however we've heard all this you are saying before a lot of people come in here give us wild promises just after the elections we don't hear anything and we go back to the same situation the pond that you saw over there is what our wildlife drink from, our cattle and our sheep drink from. It's the same water our children fetches for us to cook and eat at home. And all these things that you've been saying are things that we've heard before. So what makes you different? So what are the things I was saying to them? As I started earlier, if we're not able to use our politics, our governance, to address these issues and leave these people on their own, how can they come out of it? If the state with all the machinery, with all the taxes we're collecting, with all the know-how and so forth, hasn't been able to address these issues, what else can they do? These people are in, they are, they are, they are the weaklings in the society. And we're supposed to help them. I'm talking about water issues. I'm talking about... Um, Malaria and um, mosquitoes because of our open gutter situations, breeding mosquitoes everywhere, our debt situation engulfed with debt. I'm talking about people living in poverty. We know largely what the problems are, but yes. what are your solutions Absolutely. to some of these problems? Some, some things have been done, so some efforts have been made in some sectors. What's your plan to change Ghana's fortunes around? Fantastic. Samankra is looking to run a radical policy system to turn this country around. We can't just sit down and be playing cosmetics with our issues. Our issues require radical 
policies that would yield returns in the immediate effect. I cannot sit down and phantom why we produce twice as much oil in our oil fields and, and yet that, that we consume. And yet everything that we produce at the high fields, the oil fields, is exported out of the country and we import it back sometimes as high as 2,000, 3,000% of the value, depreciating our currency, importing inflation, not creating jobs, no value creation. Sam Ankara is saying, if Ghanaians give me the opportunity, I will stop the exportation of our raw crude oil and domesticate production of petroleum in this country. That would create jobs, that would stop the inflation, that would appreciate our currency, and it would give us employment for our young team of young people coming out of our schools, coming out of all, all parts of the country with no employment. Years ago. What about the capacity to refine the crude oil ourselves? Look, I'll get there. And I, I, this is what I'm Years ago, after the Second World War, Norway was a very poor country. They were a bunch of fishermen and farmers. The country had nothing until they found oil. And when they found the oil, they told the British, they told the Americans, you guys are the ones with the technology. You guys are the ones with the money. However, we're not going to give you access to take control and take royalties as you've done in places. What we require is train, develop our people, let us take full control from exploration to production, and then when we start selling the products, we'll pay you for the service of training. Years down the line, Norway is not just exporting the oil, they are exporting the technology, and it's the world richest, one of the world richest country, if not the richest country. Why didn't we go on the Norwegian model? Didn't we see the situation in Nigeria? Didn't we see the situation in Angola? Didn't we see the situation in Congo? Why do we follow the wrong path when the right path was there for us to follow? So I am saying to Ghanaians that if Ghanaians give me the nod, we will have to take radical decisions. We'll call all the oil producers on the table. We'll give them the option to come together collectively, exclusively build a refinery and refine about 200,000 barrels a day refinery built on in building, the country. On building a refinery, um, recently... Nigerian businessman Aliko Dangote um, opened his, his refinery in Nigeria and at the opening he granted some interviews and he was asked a, a blunt question that if he knew the challenges that he would encounter going into building a refinery would he still have done it and he said no. Brilliant. Not only did he say no, he said it cost more in terms of money and it cost him even more non-financially. Let me come in there. Are we learning? Are you considering those, those comments from very Aliko good, Dangote? Very good question. Ali, on, on Aliko Dangote's, um, what do you call it, uh, interview, he said it was difficult, but he got it done. Now, I don't want to talk about the flaws of his concept because for him to even get the funding to do the uh, refinery in his country, is the same oil companies, international oil trading companies, that are signed off-take agreements for him to grant, uh, what do you call it, the, the financing from the, uh, the companies, uh, the financing houses. So that refinery, as much as it's situated in Nigeria, is actually not going to bring the cost of petroleum down because the same traders who have signed to purchase everything and resell to them. So why would Ghana's case be different? Exactly. So this is a concept I'm coming to say. So ours... It's a wholly owned private refinery. Ghana government gives exclusivity. You see, the point is when you leave it to the open market for people to compete, then obviously it becomes difficult to raise the funding. But if I call two people, two, three business people, if, if the producers themselves are not willing to do so, and I'm saying to you, we consume X amount of petroleum a year, and we want you to give you exclusive so you have the market. And you also have the optic, the, the products coming from the refinery. So the fee stock is guaranteed from the oil fields. The optic is a Ghanaian populace. And even the, our hinterlands, the countries that are above us that import petroleum, uh, what do you call it, from us. So once we do that, you give any business person, serious business person, an optic, anything you produce, we are buying. 
a, a feedstock. These are the raw materials. It doesn't take a rocket science. Within eight months, I can put up a 200 million refinery signed and sealed in Ghana operating if we're serious. So, if, so if, these are the radical policies Samankra intends to put into our economy so that we can cut off all this cosmetic work, all these gimmicks and all this noise about doing this to stop inflation, doing this to appreciate our currency. It would not work. Let's take domestic pro uh, pro uh, programs that we control to be able to address these issues. You're telling me that if Ghanaians should buy into your vision and vote for you come December 7, eight months after your inauguration, which is... Um, November? No, this January 7th. January 7th is your inauguration. Yeah. So eight months after that is about September or November, right? October Absolutely. there about. You, we would have a refinery. We need the first 90 days. We will sign the agreement for that to be set up from that point onwards, eight months, because there, look, there are refineries certain idols in different places. And the, there are groups, like I said, I'm talking to you, that all they need to do is remove and come and place it here. It wouldn't take more than eight months to get established. I haven't heard Tor in any of this. Well, because as, as you see, Tor has become a white elephant. He has his own challenges. So we would leave that issue to be addressed. So throw the baby out with the bathwater? Well, I mean, uh, if you ask the ing engineers that even looks after, they say there's a reverse cycle of operation and it doesn't give all the yields. For instance, if I put in a gallon of crude oil and I'm expecting to get uh, maybe half a gallon with other byproducts, you don't get that because the system itself is, is reverse cycle that is not operating in the way it's supposed to be. So for us to have a clean sheet, we require a brand spanking new refinery, privately owned, government giving them the incentive, let's bring them in, address the issue of high petroleum costs, address the issue of inf imported inflation, address the issue of currency depreciation, because anybody that uh, imports from your country wants to make sure that your currency is depreciated so they can buy it cheap. And that is why our currency keeps depreciating year and year on. I the cosmetic work of pumping money from the central bank to stabilize it, the cycl cyclical effect of it, be look, it can't be addressed. If I put myself Go in the shoes of a tour worker right now, watching you and listening to you, whom you're trying to get me to vote for you. You are telling me that eight months after you're sworn in, I'll be out of a job, no. more or less. Uh, you are Is working, that what you are, you're saying? You are, you are working in a 40,000 or whatever, 10,000 uh, production a day. There's a, a 200,000. Who are we we're going to recruit and employ to do the job? Obviously, they are going to recruit people who have experience, and they are the qualified people to work in the new refinery so we're talking about. So shut down tour then, and then well, employ I, the people I under this there new has refinery? To be, there has to be a lot of thinking into how we can revamp that. But looking at the policy and the program that Samankra is looking to execute, which is very radical, it doesn't bring tour into the equation. And again, this is one of them. I would make sure about 600,000... Again, why don't we produce fertilizer in our country? Everything around our country is agriculture. Agriculture has been the backbone of our economy. And we sit in here, we are importing fertilizer year on year. Who is stopping that? Why can't we produce? So I am saying again, within the first 90 years of Sam Ankara's administration, a serious contract... Within the first 90... 90 days. Okay. I will sign the agreement, uh, what do you call it, the agreement to proceed to build a, a, a top-class fertilizing producing company so that Ghanaians can produce our fertilizer locally and we can boost our agriculture. Our agriculture is basically right now nothing to write home about. We make slogans and we make all these noise about the issues, the cost of fertilizer and all these things that our people, our farmers can't afford. The quality of this and all of those are not being addressed. We just drop it under the carpet, we play cosmetic, we play politics with our issues, and we think our nation can develop. No. So under Greek, we start producing our own fertilizer. We'll what other innovation uh, we will start producing our, our, our land tenure issue. Where today a land is owned by A, tomorrow somebody else comes and says it's owned, and the courts are making rulings and changing ownership, and that doesn't give comfort to investors to come in. We'll address it head on. We're going to use blockchain to make sure that all these land issues are addressed. Besides that... But lands are not always owned by the state. Yes, exactly. They are owned by fam families well, and customary stores who release the lands for development projects. Government are going to has change that. a serious policy to address that issue. Government has to work in collaboration with these landowners to ensure that, uh, what do you call it, um, like in Rwanda, when you go in there and you want a piece of land, although the land is owned by a private worker, a private person, government gives a guarantee. You go to the Land Title Commission, 
you you tap in there the land is the land is available because a whole uh, what do you call it um, survey has been done the land is available if it's not available a red a red flag will show if it's available as soon as you take the site plan it takes the lands commission it says available the owners that are supposed to own the land names are listed if the court dispute is there the court is addressed or also shown there so digitalizing Exa exactly you digitize the, it the, and the then process government has to give guarantee to the investors and say look this we are the government we understand our country we control our laws we control the issues on the ground so we are saying that we will take care we're giving you the comfort to purchase this piece of land for your uh, your industrial farming in an event during the period there's any court case or anything we government take responsibility and we'll address that with the owners what, what would be your plan to address galamse again look I, can, I cannot phantom why we're sitting here and our country is being taken over by criminals and we're just quiet and we are we're using a term galamse. If armed robbers are robbing us on a daily basis, would you just coin a term and just say we can't solve armed robbery issues? Look, let's stop the joke. Who are the ones behind these g criminal activities? Who are the ones mining? And the same people who are, making, are supposed to protect us? So let's unravel this nonsense and go behind it and address the issues head on. What's your strategy? Our, our land has been destroyed. Look, cocoa alone, we used to produce 900,000 metric tons a year. This year is 500,000. And they are not telling us the real causes. Most of the land has been destroyed by chemicals. Some of them, are, you are there, you have a cocoa farm, you, they'll come and basically uh, uh, build a wall around it and start galam saying. So it's the, the cocoa production this year has lo less than almost about uh, 400,000 difference. And we're sitting there and we are watching and we think it's just nothing to talk about. No, my issue of addressing Galamse, first of all, we will send a street warning, street warning to everybody who is somebody that be, uh, is doing this job, doing this part of business. Now look, we're giving you a period to voluntarily cut yourself out. In an event, that's they, they still disobey and move on anybody found and again we're not going to say it's just going to be um the people who are fronting it we will go behind the scenes from arresting the guys on the field to the people that uh what do you call it pushing them paying them motivating them and also we'll make sure you have life and we, we we sentence people to jail and make sure that these things are addressed because we cannot just go around our issues. We cannot just pretend that um, everything is fine, fine. We know the causes of our challenges. Let's address it head on. Let's stop all these gimmicks and politics. Let's make sure that we create something that Ghanaians would benefit. It can't just continue to be a few of us that wins political power that shares the, 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 the spoils of our country. It's not like we've won a war when you win elections and then the few people that takes over basically decides to uh, take everything uh, take everything of the state from lands to everything i mean look we need to be serious as people I want Ghanaians to... are everybody born and bred in this country and comes from here and we need to make sure that our politics benefits these people and uplift them from the social standards that they are living in right i mean we could go into other factors that affect cocoa production and why the expectation is that the, the, the new season would see an, an increase over what we've seen we'll in the 2023 yeah. 2024 season. But I want to pick your thoughts on some your plans for other key sectors of the economy. Okay. Education, I, for example. Okay. The flagship program for this government, this administration, has been the free SHS policy. And the conversations are that will the continuing government um, have the, the, you know, would you be open to the idea of reviewing the free SHS? scrapping the free SHS, um, up updating the free SHS, improving it, what would you do with it? Well, it's the same words. If Mind you, a bill is about to Yeah. To, to, first to of all, I think, uh, uh, first of all, the free education policy is a fantastic project. It's a fantastic policy, very good and needed for the country. However, it needs a total review. And let's stop again the politics people will say oh the 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 quality of education hasn't been affected it's a lie the quality of education has been affected go to our schools our our a-listed schools like the opoko Ari school the Prempe college the infancy pims the achimotes go to the school the facilities hasn't increased and yet the population has quadrupled sometimes even as much as five to six times the population again Teacher, uh, what do you call it, um, student ratio has increased astronomically. 
There are people who are in the same class that don't even know each other. There's no cooperation, there's no coordination, there's no rebuilding, uh, what do you call it, a, a relationship built on campuses. These were the uh, what value of the things we used to get when we went to these schools. So we cannot say that the quality of education hasn't been affected. What Saman Kra is looking for is this. We will review their free education. All these top schools I've mentioned, we would make sure they go auto autonomous. The boards has to run these schools. And the boards knows what it, which includes the old students, the missionaries, the, the mission school, the missions, and then the parents teacher association, and any other interested parties that would f consider the board of these schools has to autonomously start operating what these schools. What does autonomy mean? Independent from the, uh, from, GA? Call, from GS, absolutely. Give them autonomy. Again, set up a roadmap for other schools to tick their boxes to qualify to go on autonomy. But GS Government, is overwatch. Oh, GS yes, is the yeah, umbrella that supervises. Uh, they are taking that re yes, regulatory yeah, yeah, function yes, yeah. away. Well, they can choose to put somebody on the board, but the control shouldn't be done by GS from a central point. It should be done from the schools by the school boards. Now, over on top of that, we'll set up a roadmap for other schools that wants to qualify to be autonomous, to perform certain, to um, fill certain functions and get to be qualified. Once that is done, government should concentrate on having accessible quality education for our people. Nobody goes to boarding school for free. So you set up 10 kilometers away from every home, a, a, a day school where people in that community would go. You create accessibility, you create value. At the same time, you maintain the quality of these schools that I'm talking about. This is what education needs in this country. Then you look at the curriculum. It gets to a point where education just moves from producing a workforce to the society. Education goes beyond that. We have to start t taking our kids into thinking schools, high-level intellectual ability, using their creativity and innovations. To STEM? Well, I mean, again, STEM is a fraction of it. Look, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all these tools, apps that we are using were created by young people that lived in an environment that had been created conducive for them to bring such a vision. We sit in a country with so much talent and resources. The Ghanaian human capital outside Ghana is unbelievable. Go to England, go to America, great doctors, great teachers, great economists, great experts, all Ghanaians. As soon as they leave their shores, they could do great, but whilst they're here, they can't do much. Let's revisit the issue of what is causing this. And I am saying the environment is so crucial. Create an enabling environment. Let's create in, uh, incubation centers. Let's create syllables and structures that would enable our people to use their creativity and innovation to enter into sectors, their into sectors that are normal circumstances that they can go. Education should stop from just producing labor force into the market. And I that is why I have a huge unemployment. I have two more us. questions, and then I'll give you the opportunity to address. Um, Ghanaians in, and tell them your vision. How many ministers will be in your government? 20 ministers. Again, I cannot phantom why a country like Ghana, as small as we are, with a small GDP, employs 125 ministers. That is clearly job for the boys. That is clearly... Which ones are you sacrificing from the existing... I'll, I'll come to that. Let me just finish. We have to wrap this up very quickly. Really? So I want you to get to... The, which the, which the, ministries would you okay, absolutely well, I, I, not do? I have listed it on my website, but a lot of the ministers will go. We are going to consolidate all of them. We have only 20 ministers. We're going to make sure that DCEs are, are elected in their constituencies and will run policies from the grassroots so that the people from the localities, the, every, the, the uh, grassroots, would benefit. Again, Ghana as a country as, is a unique place. Every district, every corner has its own unique selling point. Let's harness these resources. Let them take their taxes to develop these areas so that it will not just be a centralized situation where just Accra, Kumasi it benefits and the entire nation is left hanging. What's your plan? It has never happened in the history of our country that an independent candidate has won the election. What's your plan to stop the NPP from breaking the eight and to stop the NDC from recapturing power? In brilliant. the December poll. Brilliant. Before Dr. Kwame Nkrumah won the elections, uh, uh, got asked to have independence. No country in Africa had won independence before. And everybody was questioning how, that, how that's going to be possible. I am speaking to my fellow Ghanaians. As I said earlier, politics is meant to change our livelihood. Let's look back even just on this second republic, or fourth republic, sorry. What has politics done in your life's circumstances? 
What has policies done in your situations? If your situation hasn't changed and has worsened, then as Einstein says, that says to us, we can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a change. The time has come to change our course, our course of politics, the style of doing politics, the politics where people see that they invest their money and they win election and they have to share their booty has to end. Structures have to be set in place where independent thinking, selfless people have to take in, uh, what they call immediately the affairs of the nation and create wealth for everybody. Create an empire that every Ghanaian would benefit and prosper. No matter where you live, you don't have to know anybody in government. You can live in Boko, you can live in Wa Sapele, you can live in Kumasi, you can live in Accra, you can live in Ho, every corner of the country, Axim. Do your business and make sure there is a level playing field for everybody. This is the kind of policies we are bringing to you. Dr. Sam, thank you for making time to sit with us this morning. Thank you for I'm having sure me. I'm sure we'll have you again when you have need to share more information with the Ghanaian people. At GBC, we create a platform where all aspirants have a unique access to the people and to sell their message directly to them. And this morning, you had a turn on the GTV breakfast. Thank you for making time. Dr. Sam Ankara is an independent presidential aspirant aiming to take over the reins of power from his excellency Nanado Dankwe Kufuado come January 2025. He's shared his vision with you and if he is your man and you believe in that vision, you know whom you should vote for on December 7 when you go into that box. If you missed any of this conversation, go to our streams and you'll find it there. His name is Dr. Sam Ankara, independent candidate, and he's leading the alternative force for action. Afa. Afa. December by this time, now Afa. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, thank you. And thank you for staying on as well. When we return from the break, it's a breakfast show. So let's have some breakfast. We'll be back. <laughs>